Good evening, friends. I'm Meg, and I am a Gen Xer who also was diagnosed with ADHD as an older adult. And um, if you're new to this channel, welcome. And if you are returning, welcome back. If you like the content that you're seeing, uh, please feel free to like and subscribe to my channel and we can talk all things Gen X, ADHD, and uh, life. So it feels like it's been a minute since I have talked to you guys. I just got back from vacation and um, I call it my blast from the past vacation, my face the past in order to deal with the future vacation. So let's face it, us Gen Xers are resilient, compromising, accepting, self-taught, often thrown into the deep end to experience things ourselves first. But we also have some serious traumatic childhood issues. Um, and I'm not saying my childhood wasn't great. I'm just saying there's some things that, especially when you've had your formative school years and those certain pleasant or traumatizing memories that just stick with you. Those times that you remember things that happened one way and then you actually go back to that place in the past, talk about it, and you find out it happened another way or it didn't happen the way you thought it did. You're going back to get answers. And that was what this trip was for me was to deal with those events in the past, those things that I've held on to, those things, those words, those phrases, those events that stuck with me and deal with it and let it go. And I did, which I'm glad to say I did. So the start of my trip, I started off big and it was dealing with that most challenging most awful time of my life. And going to my high school reunion. Dun, dun, dun. The fact that I didn't back out like I've done so many times. I want to apologize to a few of my friends who thought that I was going to go and I backed out and then they wound up going. This time I was a hundred percent absolute in my decision. I'm going, I don't think anybody believed me until I actually showed my face. And it was really to kind of deal with and see those people who I was ready. I was prepared. I was ready to do battle. And then I kind of thought about it and I'm like, this is my 30th. No, it was my 35th high school reunion. So I graduated in 1988. The time where big hair was at its peak, you know, touching the sky. But it was also me thinking about everybody's got their something. 35 years later, we've all experienced some things. We've lived some, we've lived life. We've got a lot of baggage. I am no different from anyone else. And I went into it like, they're no better than me. I'm no better than them. We're just people who, you know, I, I went with the intention after a while to connect with people or reconnect with people and do it also so that I didn't have any regrets in the future saying, you know, you always regret the things you didn't do. So I wanted to do it because also we are at the age where we've lost some classmates along the way. And we've also, you know, we have older parents that we're dealing with and um, 
you know, maybe some parents have passed away. It's just, it's just a complicated time at our age and everybody's going to go through it. We're, no one's immune. So I decided I'm going. And the surprising thing about it was that people were genuinely happy to see me. They were surprised. And I'm really glad I went through my yearbook before I went. But it was really nice to talk and catch up and find out what people do for a living and just connect. Network. Network with your friends. And I've also just reconnected with some really great people. And there were people that I was kind of thinking that they would show up and you know, I would have an issue with and it didn't happen. So we also got to talk about some things that have happened in the past. And it's like, you do realize like, holy crap, I've been holding on to this stupid stuff for so many years. And it's done. It's over. We're all like living wherever, all over the country, all over the state where I went to high school, wherever. And we're just trying to navigate through this thing called life. So nobody's getting out of it alive. But it was very interesting. And I'd also like to add that it really did help that a friend of mine stayed with me um, and that we, you know, really connected. So I, I don't get to see her that much when I do come up or do go up north to visit. So it was really nice to see her again and just spend some time, just her and I, um, and just being like teens again, you know, but you know, teens who talk about hot flashes and stuff like that, <laughs> but it was just so nice just to see her. And then even the next morning we did miss breakfast because we were up so late. Um, the people that did still linger like we did, um, you know, we got to see and we took some more pictures and it was just so fun. And that was the first hurdle that I went through and it just wasn't that bad. Even, you know, traveling, um, up to New Jersey and taking the air train and then the New Jersey transit to, um, to Metro Park Station and getting an Uber to the hotel and being able to check in two hours early, which was awesome because I was tired, I was hot, I was gross, I needed to shower, I needed some rest. And it just went off without a hitch. So that was my first part of my vacation that I just kind of, even I go to reunions where I used to live, where I grew up in, in New York City. And also just there's drama and things like that. But looking back for me, it wasn't necessarily the people that I had a problem with growing up with that I'm learning. It wasn't any of that. It was a completely different issue. And I still deal with it today. And that issue is my ADHD. You know, that sensitivity and rejection and boundary issues that I have where I just am a people pleaser and it's very easy to just wear me down and manipulate me. And that was something that I still deal with. So the second day, uh, of my vacation, I had my friend drop me off at the train station and I took it to New York City. And I had a really heavy suitcase because I overpack, but I was like, well, you overpack, this is what you get. So I got lucky because I wound up taking some escalators getting out of Penn Station. And when 
I did find out that the F train was running on the weekend because the Roosevelt Island tram is like so touristy now that you can't even like take it. And they were shutting off the F service on weekends, which was like ridiculous. So I guess they put it back on the schedule so that people aren't waiting two hours in line just to go home or leave, you know. So anyway, I did find me and my luggage, escalators, mwah, going down the street, perfect. Except I was wearing these slip-on shoes and I kept giving myself a flat tire. And if you know what a flat tire is, that is a total 80s Gen X reference which means when you're walking behind someone and you step on the back of their shoe and then it like the shoe basically falls out, you know, like their foot comes out or it just like totally screws them up walking. I did flat tire myself many times. And then at one point I had trouble with one of my wheels on the suitcase and I kind of fell on top of it in front of everybody near, I guess I was walking by Macy's on 34th street. So that was like fun but since I have ADHD and I'm clumsy and I do stupid stuff all the time and I have you know mystery bruises here and there um I'm so used to it that I wasn't even embarrassed I was just like well that's unfortunate and the only issue I had was getting to the train station there was these ramps perfect worked out right before you got to the platform there was a series of stairs it's like shit so there was some other family that had luggage, but they had carry-ons. And this one girl couldn't go down the stairs. And here I am with a like 26 inch big ass piece of luggage, took the front handle, the side handle, and pulled that bitch down the stairs. And I was whole carrying it. I wasn't dragging it, nothing. So the train station was super hot and I'm sitting here lugging my luggage. And the train comes, everything's perfect. It's all air conditioned. I'm like, thank you, Jesus. I take the elevator when I get off the train up to, up to the street. Thank God. So then the rest of the way, it was just like, maybe, I don't know, not even a third of, the, of a mile to the hotel. And they also had a ramp. So I took that ramp up and they let me check in early. Mm -hmm.